The apostles did not teach fasting or tithing as doctrine to the church. In my free online book, Fasting and Tithing, Blessing Bringers or Burdens, I go into exhaustive detail where I explain why these two religious practices are nowhere commanded to believers after the cross. Just because a religious practice seems to be a great idea and hard on the flesh, that doesn't make it God's commandment. In Deuteronomy 12 verse 32, God specifically tells Israel that they're not to add to or take away from the commandments he gave them. And God was talking about Mosaic law, which he never gave to other nations besides Israel. Jesus was forever locking horns with hostile ancient doctors of the Jewish law. These bright boys took a law of Moses, which was extremely difficult to keep in the first place, and made it into an even heavier burden. These ancient doctors of the Jewish law doctored up the law to make it even harder to keep. They added endless hair-splitting ordinances above and beyond what Moses had commanded. They added many extra ritual fast days to the Jewish calendar. Although God had only ordered one fast day, the annual Day of Atonement, on that particular day, Israelites were commanded to afflict their souls to show sorrow for sin. No such commandment was ever given to the church by any New Testament apostle. Why? Our sin had been dealt with at Calvary once and for all and forever removed from God's sight. Hallelujah! And as for us having to fast, as many claim, because the bridegroom is no longer with us, Jesus said in Matthew twenty eight twenty, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Now either Jesus was serious when he said that, or he wasn't. Gentiles, non-Jews, who became part of the early church, had grown up worshiping pagan gods. They may not even have been familiar with the usual Jewish customs among which were compulsory tithing and fasting. If these practices were important, surely Peter and Paul would not have taken it for granted that these Gentile converts were already familiar with fasting and tithing and how they should be done properly. Instead, the apostles would have taught extensively on how to do these practices in such a way that God would be glorified and pleased and the people would earn his favor by doing them. The epistles or apostolic doctrinal letters to the churches contain no commandment to fast and tithe and no instruction on how to do it properly. Many think fasting is binding on Christian believers today because in Matthew 6.16 Jesus said when you fast, not if you fast. But Christ also says in Luke 14.12 that when, not if you give a big dinner party, that you must invite all the poor people of the neighborhood. Jesus is not ordering some poor widow to throw a big dinner party here, and John the Baptist would never have done this, because he was an ascetic who did not eat fancy foods. Jesus was addressing Jews still living under the law, not Gentiles. And he was teaching people to do things with a proper attitude and not be proud about their religious practices. Because then it has no value in the sight of God and they lose their reward. If Jesus insisted on fasting as a way to increase your spiritual power over Satan, then why didn't Jesus force his own disciples to fast during his earthly ministry so they could heal even more people than they already did. If fasting empowers you to do great things for God, then why did Jesus perform many more miracles than John the Baptist, who fasted all the time? In Luke chapter 7, verse 33 and 34, Jesus said John the Baptist didn't even eat bread or drink wine while Jesus came eating and drinking. Many Christians claim fasting gives you an edge over Satan in your spiritual warfare. Well then, why wasn't fasting even hinted at in Ephesians chapter 6, 
which teaches spiritual warfare. Why would Paul just assume everybody did it anyway? And there was no need to mention it. Enforcing the doctrine of fasting would have opened up a big can of legalistic worms. Some Christians insist you have to go hungry all night long till the next morning before it even counts as a fast. But the psalmist David sometimes fasted only until sunset. What about Christians who live in northern Alaska? In midsummer the sun doesn't go down for months. Can you have juice? Can you eat a popsicle as long as you melt it first and turn it into a drink? The ramifications are ridiculous. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ ushered in the new covenant, and for the first time ever, non-Jews were fully included in God's program of redemption. Before the cross, Jesus plainly said in Matthew 15:24 that he was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not to other nations. In Matthew 8, 4, Jesus tells a healed Jewish leper to offer up a gift or animal sacrifice commanded in the law of Moses. He did not tell healed Gentiles to do this. There is a very peculiar situation going on in Acts 21, verses 20 through 25. The Apostle Paul got a visit from some legalistic Jewish Christian leaders. They urged Paul to shave his head and offer a ritual sacrifice to fulfill a vow to show everybody he was living according to accepted Jewish custom. Apparently it took some time to make the transition from Jewish legalism to liberty in Christ. In order to keep the peace among the brethren, Paul complied with this request. But nowadays you never see preachers shaving their heads or offering animal sacrifices to keep a vow to God. Paul never asked Gentile believers to imitate this sort of behavior. Notice in verse 25 that James, the most legalistic of all the apostles, has this to say. And I'm reading in the King James Version. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, from blood, and from strangled meats, and from fornication. Now, if fasting and tithing were as important as some Christians claim, this would have been an excellent opportunity for these Jewish church leaders to mention that Gentiles should be observing these things. But they plainly said Jewish customs were not to be kept by Gentile believers. Not to say that there won't be times that you'll be so busy praying or engaging in deep spiritual warfare that it would be unwise to stop and eat. I can understand that those times will come because you are avoiding outside distractions to get an important job done for God. But don't get the idea that it's your own personal deprivation and suffering that sets people free because Jesus already won the battle on Calvary. It's the prayer that sets people free, not what you do to your body. To read more stories and articles on this subject, download my free book, Fasting and Tithing, Blessing Bringers or Burdens, which you'll find on Scribd.com. Thanks for listening.